welcome back to another episode of Paul's Railroad. Uh, what we have in front of the camera here is a just a very small passenger car set. I designed this uh, passenger car set in uh, Fusion 360. I printed it out on my Ender 3 um, 3D printer. It's all printed out in PLA filament. And what we're going to do uh, on this episode is we're going to get this uh, all cleaned up. We're going to get it painted. Uh, we're going to go through the assembly. And uh, the most important part of this video is I'm going to show you how I'm going to put inexpensive micro LEDs in these passenger cars. Something anybody can do for any scale. As a matter of fact, I mean, this is going to be something that you could do to uh, current pieces of rolling stock that you already have if they don't have lighting in them. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole paint process and cleaning up process. We've it's pretty straightforward, just like anything else, it's just going to get airbrushed. Um, I will show the assembly process only because uh, after I post this video, I do sell the files to the items that I uh, create and build on Cults 3D for people to download and print their own um, versions of uh, these designs. So I'm going to go through a very quick assembly process just uh, for that. Um, but again, we're going to uh, spend most of our time going over how I'm going to light the interiors of these up and uh, you know we're going to be using track power to power the lights so it's going to be pretty cool so hang tight I'm going to get all this stuff uh, cleaned up get it painted when we get back we'll start assembly and uh, start working on the lights okay we're back um, if you hear some noise in the background that's my furnace running I apologize um, I just want to give you a little quick overview of where we are at so far with these passenger car set um, as you can see, everything has been painted. I have several several of them I've already put together. Um, let's take a look here at what, what you're going to need if you're going to do something similar to this. First and foremost, um, I don't care what brand you use. I buy these Bachman trucks. I get these from Train World. The uh, important thing about the trucks, no matter what brand, is they have to be insulated and uh, what I mean by that here let me uh, zoom in a little bit here I don't know if you uh, will be able to see or not but on the inside of this wheel whoop, right in there you see it's a black plastic that separates the actual wheel from the axle the other side is right to the wheel no black plastic okay so that's insulated and they're insulated on both on the same side so when you have your trucks on the bottom of your carriages like so you have uh, sorry you have uh, this side will be insulated and then this side will be insulated or vice versa that's how you get your uh, track power to work if not, they would constantly short out. Um, you're going to need, of course, your little micro LEDs. Or whatever LEDs you can get your hand on that will fit in the, in the piece of rolling stock that you're working with. So for bare minimum, to use this, you're going to need a micro LED. And if I can get my fingers to work, a resistor. Now again, I do not know exactly what track power, how much voltage you're running on your track, so the size of the resistor is going to be up to you to figure out. So that is going to be the bare minimum, plus of course a wire to get the power from the track to the resistor and to the LED. And uh, what I'm using for a wire is I actually found some old telephone wire laying around that, I mean who has a telephone in their house anymore, right? So I got tons of this laying around I'm going to use. It works great. What I'm using for the pickup, right there's the pickup on these uh, vehicles or these pieces of rolling stock, is I uh, bought a very, let's zoom out here a little bit, a very thin sheet of brass, very the thinnest I could find. Uh, it's thin enough I actually can cut it with a pair of scissors. So we cut that down to size and we uh, fit it to this, which we'll get to that point. Um, now to wire this 
what I think would be the proper way. Now, mind you, I am no electronics expert. This is actually my first uh, dive into electronics at all, and I do a lot of research on my own to figure this out. It's not hard. Uh, you know, if I can do it, I think anybody can. Um, but anyways, to do it so it's more of a polished and finished product, something like you'd buy off the shelf and you'd expect it to work a certain way, uh, you're going to need a capacitor and a bridge diode. Now, again, I'm not an expert. A capacitor is kind of like, it's just a little uh, power storage device. It's kind of like a battery, but it, it expels its power just as fast out as it as it comes in. What this does though is that when you are running over bad spots in your track, whether it be connections, just a dirty spot, this uh, capacitor will store enough power to keep your lights lit and steady. And I'll show you when we get to the track what I'm talking about. Again, I have a whole, let me show you real quick. Let me zoom this puppy back out one more time. I've got a whole big old box of capacitors, and they're in you know they're rated for uh, different sizes. And that's how much you know energy they'll store. Uh, my advice: use the biggest one that you can fit into the model you're using. It's you're just going to be better off that way. Now, as far as the bridge diode goes. This just this helps control the power. You got a uh, I don't even know if you'll be able to see this on the camera, but you've got a positive and a negative, and these will go to the respective positive and negative on your LED. And the nice thing about the other end is this is where the track power comes in, where these two squiggly lines are. If it'll focus, there we go. And that doesn't matter which way. You can have these go. I mean, positive, negative, doesn't matter. So you definitely need to use one of these. Again, I'm not an electronics expert, so I, I apologize for not knowing the true nature or purpose of that, but everything I've read says you've got to use one, and I've used it, and it works, worked out great. Okay, so before we go to the assembly of these uh, passenger car sets, let's take the three that I have finished over to the track, and I, I have these done in two different ways and I'll show you what I mean about why I think you should you know, take the extra time and use the uh, extra electronics to make it work properly so hold on one minute let's get over there okay uh, we're over here at the layout or what will hopefully Sunday sooner than later be a, a nice layout um, with the passenger cars the passenger car in the back this one right here is the uh, first iteration of this that I have done before I really learn how to do it what I consider to be a more proper way to do it and it has, simply has just a resistor and a micro LED installed now when I turn the power on you'll see it works works just fine but we'll see why I wanted to go the way I did go the one here in the front has the extra capacitor and the bridge diode and it has two micro LEDs in it so let's uh, turn the track power on and see what happens. Cross your fingers, right? Ooh, look, we got lights. Okay, now aesthetics aside, um, as you can see, the one in the back has only one LED in it, and the one in the front has the two. And of course, the one in the front looks better just because it has two LEDs in it. And to be quite honest, it probably could use a third. Um, but let's see if it'll do it with me just moving them. And not really. Oh, well, there we go, a little bit. A little bit of blinkage in the back. Okay, well, let me run my train around, pick up these uh, two cars. Let's run around the track, and uh, I'll show you what I mean about why I think you need to have a, a capacitor in uh, your carriages or any pieces of rolling stock that you're going to light up, anyways. Okay, 
here we go. Now as you can see, every time I hit a spot that there's a power interruption on the track, that rear passenger car blinks. And it, it blinks a lot, especially going over turnouts and this little uh, grade crossing we have here. Come around one more time here real quick. Now you'll notice too that the one that has the capacitor in it still loses a little bit of um, power. And the only reason that is, is the size of the capacitor. And this would be an end scale. I could not fit a larger one in there. I do notice that the longer that these sit on the track, however, it, it seems to take a little bit of a while to actually build up energy in the capacitor. And that, uh, that kind of fades and goes away a little bit. It stops it stops blinking a little bit. Let's see if I run around here just again if it all stay a little more solid. Definitely better and most definitely better than the rear passenger car. Alright, well that's enough of that. Let's head back over to the workbench. Let me show you how I built these puppies. Oh, one really cool thing though. to show how the capacitor kind of works. Let me uh, remove these cars from the track. Now you watch the rear car so I pick it up see what happens to the lights. Bam, off, right? Now this car. Ooh. Stay lit for a moment. Again, the larger the capacitor, the longer the light will stay lit. So if you have the ability to put a larger capacitor in, I say go for it. All right, well, before we get into building the electronics for uh, these carriages, I want to real quickly go over how to put one together. Just in case, like I said, I sell all my files for my designs on, on Colts 3D. I don't sell them for a lot of money, but, uh, you know, the money I do uh, get, or hopefully will be getting, a little bit more than I am, uh, will go back into my hobby. That's how uh, I can afford to do some of these things. Um, anyways, the design that I have um, has five separate interiors, okay? Four of the interiors go with passenger car bodies. So there's only one file for passenger car. You'd print it four times. And it's one interior here. As you can see, it's got like a little storage area. Uh, this goes with like the uh, baggage car body or a combination car body, whatever you want to consider it to be. Now, the thing that uh, you must keep in mind is that the interiors, um, it doesn't matter which direction you insert these into the cars. So you need to test fit them. Okay, each one, you know, even though they're different, they do line up properly. It's like right there, and as you can see, right here, that's not right. So we'll flip this around. And there you go. Now each compartment has its own window, as you can see. You know, even with the uh, the baggage car, it's the same way. And there's a certain way it goes in. You know, that is not the correct way that that goes in because how walls line up 
in the front and middle of the windows, as you can see. There we go. Okay, so after you figure that out, which way they go, and it's in, like I said, each each uh, passenger car is like that. The first step to do, well, actually, the first step to do before you do anything, even paint, is to clean up all the pieces and fit them. You know, I mean, the 3D printed parts, uh, 3D printers are awesome, and they're very accurate. But when you start getting down to uh, really super tight tolerances like this and fine things, um, you, you, you do have to do a little bit of filing, a little bit of sanding to get them to fit just right. So after you get that done, make sure everything fits properly. First thing we're going to do is we're going to glue the interior to the frame. Again, it's very simple. Just Trust the old super glue or whatever glue you want to use for your PLA parts. I happen to really like this Gorilla um, gel style glue. It doesn't take much. Now you can use a Sol set, you know, Insta set, whatever they call it. Um, however, I did that one time. And I ended up having to break it, break it apart because I didn't have it. It was only off just by a millimeter, but it was enough to not fit in a carriage body that well. And I don't like just spraying that stuff on my freshly painted items either. Um, one thing I did do with this, speaking of paint, is uh, the... Structures that I paint, I don't do this because they're, you know, to me, they're not going to get handled once they get put on the layout. They're going to be pretty much left alone. But these will be handled, of course. And uh, so after I painted them, actually, let me see if I can find it just real quick. Hold on. Yeah, two different kinds here. You have your tester's dull coat. Um, I put that on the uh, frame here. You see it's still dull to help protect the paint. And I actually put it on the interior as well. For the roof and for the body, I use uh, this gloss top coat. Um, I wouldn't suggest using this top uh, coat from Createx. Uh, this stuff really is hard to clean out of an airbrush. Um, actually, uh, even this stuff's quite difficult to clean out of an airbrush. A little less difficult, and it's a lot cheaper, actually. Um, you can get these at any hobby store or them off of Amazon. Anyways, I sprayed those with uh, the dull coat and the gloss top coat just to help protect the finish because, like I said, we're going to be handling these a lot more. And I actually do use this uh, Insta Set when I am attaching these pieces of brass to the bottom of the frame for my pickups and I have not had any issues with uh, any paint and had no issues with any kind of a paint mess up with that so okay so anyways back to this real quick so once you get this glued together seems to be set up pretty good I like to just uh, need some more glue pretty soon just put a couple dots down the side here and I take my old trusty wooden dowel that I use for spreading glue and just a nice little thin, you don't want, you know, any real thick runny spots. Just kind of thin it out a little bit. Make sure, like I said, when you're doing this, make sure you remember which way is which when you go to put this in your, uh, in your body. Because once you put it in, I mean, you can get it out if you do it right away, but you start making a mess. Okay. Now that's the easy part. Now comes the tough part. Getting it in here. So 
So you just kind of use your thumbs to push down until the frame is even with the bottom of the inside here, not to the outside, the inside here of these. Give it a hold. And that's it. I mean, the body's together. Now, I do not glue the roof on. That way you have always, always have access to your electronics inside. And the way I have the roof designed, it snaps right in. And it's not going to go anywhere. Okay. So I'll let this glue sit up for a while, and we'll come back and we'll start on the electronics. Hey right, guys. Well, we're going to get started on building the electronics for the lighting system for these uh, carriage cars. Um, first step that we are going to do is make up all these little pickups that sit in here, kind of like this, for the wheels. Now what I did is um, I took the time and I made one by hand, uh, forming it uh, to where it fit the way I wanted it to fit. And I made a very simple jig, which is some finished nails and a slow piece of two by four. And very, very simple. And now this, you definitely want to do it if you're going to make a jig. I'm sorry, you definitely want to make a jig if you're going to be printing out, you know, a dozen, half dozen, whatever cars. Make this so much simpler because there's, you know, two of these per car. It's very simple. Just kind of put it in there like that over the first, uh, I mean, the second nail in. Just get it on there. Start wrapping it around this nail, keep it nice and tight, bring it around, keep on coming, and just uh, take your nippers, whatever you got, and I always go into the, so I can zoom in here if you can see a little bit better, onto the uh, outside of this nail to cut it, because just like in woodworking you can you only get one chance of cutting it. So basically all I do is I just grab it with these and use that to pull this back off the jig. And I get to a comfortable spot and yep. Now you've got that form there already, so just finish kind of forming it. Stick it on your car. Have your truck ready just to give it a test and voila I mean of course it need to need a little bit of fitting of course but it's right where it needs to be it's touching the axle you can see it just barely touching the axle and it's not touching the frame not rubbing now I'm sure that there are probably better ways of doing this I have tried sliding um, pieces of brass underneath the axles, but it put too much tension on these little axles and the wheels didn't roll very freely. The only problem that I can see with doing it this way right now is that if you were to take, you know, this side of this, this side over here, the wheel is insulated. So if you were to take a sharp turn to where this wheel would actually touch this piece of metal, it will short out. Um, I have, a, I think I have 11 quarter inch radius curve on the track that I have now, and I, I'm not experiencing that problem. So, this is the way I'm doing it, and it's very simple. And uh, you know, I bend it like this, so I kind of use, you know, this little part right in here to butt up against this little cross member. And I'll just, uh, I mean, before I put everything else in there, I'll put a dab of glue down in there. Okay. So, anyway. I put these where I want them, then I just take out my drill, and I drill out behind it enough to get a wire through to allow me to solder it on there. So uh, let me get these glued up, and we'll go from there. All right, we've got everything here ready to go to start putting our electronics together to get them in the carriage. Um, what I've done so far is I have glued with super glue the pickups onto the carriage, and as you can see, I have drilled holes to the bottom of the frame and the uh, interior to run our wiring to the pickups. I also have taken um, craft sticks or coffee stirrer sticks, whatever you've got on hand, and I super glued the two little micro LEDs to that. I've wired the positive together and the negatives together. 
I put it on here it just it's going to make a much neater and easier installation the other three components we have is we have our, our uh, capacitor here we have our uh, bridge diode and of course we have our resistor that I can never pick up now the capacitors um, again I'm, I'm new to electronics so correct me if I'm wrong now these ones do have a positive written on one side and like a negative on the other but what I've seen with electronics especially when it comes to things like this and LEDs it seems like the longer leg is usually the positive side again if that may not always be true but that's what I'm coming to find out but what we're going to do to start out is we're going to bend the legs back over top of the capacitor evenly okay then we're going to uh, grab this bridge diode and we're going to find the positive and negative side this is the positive gold plus sign on it I'm going to bend these up just a little bit we're going to sit it right here like this, it fits together very nicely actually you know what I think I'm going to do I almost forgot I have some um, double sided tape here I'm going to cut just a little piece off just to kind of help us hold it a little bit of course Then on the bottom of the capacitor. Okay. Sorry, folks, I'm blind as a bat. I need to find a positive side again. Oh, there we go. All right. So we'll just stick this on here like so. It's a little difficult doing this looking through a camera, I'll tell you. Okay, and I have these um, self closing. Um, needle nose, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. They're not pliers. Anyhow, I'm gonna use that to hold it all together. Okay, now I'm not gonna trim any of these long pieces off because we're gonna solder the uh, lights to these ends too. So I'm just gonna get these kind of together. I don't know if I'm doing a good enough job showing you. I don't want to too far down because I don't want to touch the capacitor with the soldering iron. And like I said, this is all relatively new to me still, so I'm still learning. I got a set of helping hands here, and they definitely are helping hands, I tell you. Okay, like I said, I'm very relatively new at soldering, so please forgive me. I'm sure there's other people that can do a much better job than me. But we're just going to get to solder these up. See, didn't even take. Didn't get it good enough. That's better. Okay. Flip this thing back around here. Yep. Oh. Always mess up things when you're on camera, right? So that's, that's, that's how it works. Murphy's Law. Okay. Now the resistor. These can be soldered in. They are um, any direction. I had to look that up myself, actually. 
I thought I'd save you a step. I am going to trim the end here. I don't want it this long. We'll leave the other one long so I can hold it here in the uh, helping hands. And as far as our little circuit goes, that's it. That's done. Uh, all that's left to do is we will solder in the positive side of our LEDs into this, into the um, resistor side, and our negative onto here. And then our wires for our track pickup will be soldered into uh, these two posts here. And again, uh, these posts, it does not matter which side is which it, it that's what the bridge rector or bridge does it I do believe it controls which uh, the switching of the positive and negative of the electrical supply so um, I'm not going to bore you with any more because it's just soldering and wires um, I'm gonna get it all put together and I'll show you what it looks like in the carriage okay here we are finished as you can see, you got the trucks on. Everything's all soldered up and wired. Again, very, very simple little circuit there. Lights are all put together. All it's left to do is put the top on. Now I've got a little bit of a double side sticky tape on this here coffee stirrer. to hold it in there but you know we can take it out anytime we need to Let's do a little bit of wire management here And there's another one done. Simple as that. Let me get these other ones finished up and we'll throw them all on a track and see how well they run. Well, I know it's a little grainy because I had the lights turned off, but uh, I wanted to turn this on and see what it looks like in the dark. Um, we are finished putting together the passenger car set and wiring it for lights. So let's turn it on and, and see what she looks like. Not bad.